Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English. And in this video, I want to show you how to calculate a Wilcoxon ranked sum test uh, by hand. So what I've got here is um, five people um, and they have agreed to handle a snake for the first time. And so what I want to do is see if their fear of snakes changed Bef um, from before they'd ever handled a snake to after. So I asked them on a scale from one to 10 to tell me how much they feared snakes. And this was before they'd ever handled one. And they gave me these scores over here. So there's a big range. Uh, most people are in the sample were <clears throat> quite afraid, um, but there was one person who had no fear. And then <clears throat> I let them handle a snake for a while. Um, and then I measured their fear again after they had handled the snake. And here's their fear ratings after handling the snake. Now, it's one sample measured twice, which makes it appropriate for a uh, Wilcoxon ranked sign test. And what you do after you get the two measurements for the sample is you find the absolute value of the difference between the two scores or the two measurements for each individual in the sample. When you do this, it's also important to um, note which scores, which changes produce negative numbers and which ones produce positive numbers. So if the fear went up from time one to time two, that would produce a negative number. And I indicated the negative values in red and, um, but I, we still need to take the absolute values. So I've taken the absolute value of negative one and then marked it in red to show that it initially was a negative number. So I do that for each of the cases and those are the absolute values. And then the absolute values of the differences between the scores for each case. And then over here, I rank the different scores from smallest to largest. So this first case here had a different score of one, an absolute value different score of one, and that was the smallest difference um, from time one to time two of any of the cases. This second case had a different score of three, and that was the third smallest change. This change of two points was the second smallest change and so on. So you can see uh, these are the ranked difference scores between um, uh, each case from time one to time two, from before they handle the snake to after they handle the snake. The next step in this test is you need to create or calculate um, W scores. And there's gonna be two of these. Uh, one will be for the sum of the negative ranks, and one will be for the sum of the positive ranks. Now you can see there are no negative values here, but uh, because we've taken absolute values and then we've ranked the differences. But if you just take the scores in red, which are these two, if you take those two scores, uh, those are the negative um, change numbers. So those would be the negative um, ranked scores. So one of the Ws equals uh, the rank for the first negative score, which was one, plus the rank for the other negative score, which was two, equals three. The other W score is the sum of the ranks of the positive change scores. So that would be three plus five plus four equals um, 12. Now, 
the same way that we did with the Wilcoxon, um, not the Wilcoxon, the man Whitney U test, we need to compare the smaller of these two W scores to um, the uh, critical value that we find in Appendix G. And uh, our observed W value, the smaller of the two, would need to be smaller than the critical value in Appendix G. So let's take a look and see what that Appendix G value is. All right, now that we have our two W values, uh, the next step is to take the smaller one, which was three, and compare it to the critical W value from Appendix G. So the first thing we do is we look and we see the sample size which is five, and as we can see, there's no values here um, until you get to an alpha level of 0 0.20. So our, critic, our calculated or observed W value was three. That does not even show up for uh, the sample size, so uh, we can conclude that our observed W value is larger than the non-existent critical value. Um, and our result is not statistically significant. If we had had a larger sample size that produced the same W value, um, just hypothetically, like suppose we had a um, sample size of 10, um, then our observed W value of 3 would be less than the critical W value of 8, and then our result would have been considered statistically significant. But we had a sample size of five, an observed W value of three, and that is not statistically significant according to this table. So our observed W value was three, And our critical value, we'll say it was zero, which was actually really less than zero for an alpha level of 0.05. So we conclude that the results were not statistically significant, meaning the change from time one to time two in fear of handling snakes was not significant. There is not a difference between the um, the median rank um, from of fear before handling snakes and fear after handling snakes. So um, you know very difficult, pretty much impossible to find a significant result with a sample size this small. But this does show you how you would calculate a Wilcoxon um, sign rank test by hand. Hope that's helpful.